Have you recently got a new body piercing but now it's red, tender and swollen? If so, your piercing may be infected, but don't worry. In this video, we're going to cover everything that you need to know to sort this problem out. Now, it's important to know that any piercing can become infected. Piercings that are outside the earlobe, in the ear cartilage, the belly button or the nipple are at highest risk of infection. In this video, we're going to cover what is normal for you to experience with a new piercing, signs that your piercing may be infected, how you can prevent infection and finally when you should seek help and treatment from your doctor. So first of all, let's cover what's considered normal when you first had a new piercing. Well, you might find that the site may be tender, itchy, and the surrounding area may look slightly red on white skin or a little darker than usual on brown or black skin. You may also notice that the pierced hole may produce a small amount of pale fluid that forms a crust. This is completely normal. If you've had an ear or nose cartilage piercing, small lumps can sometimes form around the piercing. These are called granulomas, which are a sign of trapped fluid. Now you can treat these by soaking a pad in warm water, then holding the pad against them once a day. Now these are all totally normal things that happen after a piercing. They're not concerning and they will usually settle down after a couple of days. But sometimes there is a chance that you could develop an infection. So what are the signs and symptoms that you need to watch out for? Well, you may notice that the area around the piercing has become swollen, painful, hot, very red or dark. You may also notice redness that seems to be spreading under the skin. There may also be blood or pus coming out of it. Now the pus color can be white, green or yellow and this is different to the pale fluid that is normally expected. You may also have a high temperature, so a temperature greater than 37.5 degrees C or you may feel generally unwell. If you developed any of these features you should seek advice from a health provider. Now depending on the site of the piercing as well as your symptoms, the doctor may prescribe antibiotics for an infected piercing and the antibiotic may come in the form of a cream that you apply over the area with clean hands or to prevent the infection from spreading, your doctor may recommend antibiotics that you take by mouth. Now if you are prescribed antibiotics, it's really important to take them for as long as your health provider advises. If you stop your treatment course before the recommended time, your infection could return. So even if you start to feel better after a couple of days, don't stop taking the treatment. Keep taking it for as long as has been advised. Now your doctor may also need to take out the piercing if you have a severe infection. Leaving an infected piercing untreated can result in a more severe infection or something called an abscess, which is a swollen area filled with pus, which might require hospital admission for drainage. In some rare cases, an infection can cause your piercing to close up. Now, there are six things that you can do to try and reduce the risk of a piercing getting infected. First of all, choose a qualified, experienced and licensed piercer. Clean your piercing twice a day with warm salt water. You could also use warm salty water to soften any crusting. It's important to try gently turn the jewellery whilst you're cleaning the piercing. Try use a clean paper towel to dry the piercing and finally gargle with salty water or an alcohol free mouthwash if you've got a mouth piercing such as a tongue piercing. There are also eight important things to make sure that you avoid doing. First of all, most importantly, don't do your own piercings. You're much more likely to get an infection if you do this. Secondly, don't use cotton wool to clean the piercing. Use a cotton bud or pad instead. Don't pick at any crusting. Don't twist or turn the jewellery when the piercing is dry. Don't use a towel to dry the piercing. Don't have sex until a genital piercing has healed. Don't have oral sex until a mouth piercing has healed. And finally, don't go swimming for the first 24 hours after a piercing because this can increase your risk of getting an infection. Also, when you go to get your piercing, make sure that you ask your provider to firstly explain what they're going to do to you, whether there are any risks, how to care for your piercing properly, as well as how long they anticipate it will take to heal. Now, I've included lots more information on infected piercings in the description box if you want to learn more, and please do leave a comment if you'd like to share your own experiences with infected piercings to help others, or you found this video helpful. It'd be great to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.